Welcome back everyone. In this build, I am going to tackle a prop that I have always liked as far as I can remember. And even when I was a kid, when I saw the movie for the first time, it had that little something that amazed me in the way it was designed. Of course, you saw the title, so you already know what I'm about to build. It's the Jedi Remote Training Ball from Star Wars. The original. Not the, not the new one. I know it's been done before, it's nothing new, nothing fancy, uh, but still, I always wanted a good quality one, and I simply believe it was time for me to make my own. And if you like what you see, just give it a like, and if you feel like it, just subscribe. It's free, and it's always a good pat on the back. So, cheers, and let's build it. Remember, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him. You see? You can do it. All right, let's get to it. As usual, I gather a bunch of references and then I printed out the ball on my cheap PLE printer. As you can see, it looks pretty crappy and I wasn't going to send my way out of so many details. So I asked a friend to print it out on his resin printer and of course the result was pretty damn cool. Still, there was some minor artifacts from the supports and he also broke a chunk that I had to glue back in place. Meaning that I had to clean it up a little bit with my regular process. But it was still less painful than trying to clean out that PLE sphere that I printed out first. Bundo, sending. More sanding, then primer filler. The small parts were pretty cool already and they would have done the job just fine. Since they are supposed to be made out of metal, I might as well build them the way they should be, right? I draw some sketches of the order of operation and made a prototype on the lathe to see how it would do. I'm no machinist expert and I can be a bit goofy sometimes. So to me it's pretty important to plan my step ahead properly to avoid too many mistakes. To make the holes in the connector, I made a paper template to make sure that each connector would be drilled at the exact same position, or close enough. I used my Dremel to bevel each hole just a little bit, I just simply think that Bevels has a tendency to catch the light a little better. The prototype was a success, so I only had seven more to go. I then went to the dollar store and got a cheap flashlight to put inside the ball. I stripped it down to the core and only kept the light and the switch. I rewired it to fit my need. Test the light and then glued it permanently to the base.
I use white polystyrene sheet to diffuse the light into the holes of the connector. With some help. I then glued the two hemispheres together using 5 minute epoxy. The seams were far from being perfect. To fix that, I built some sanding sticks, filled the gap with bondo, sand it smooth and prime everything once more. Once everything was dry, I gave the ball a base coat of light beige color. I added more diffuser to the little parts. Then glued all these little parts into the sphere. To seal the paint job, I use Alclad 2 clear gloss lacquer with my very cheap airbrush. You do not always need the most expensive tool to get the job done. Sometimes the baby ones just do the trick fine. It was time to paint the red around the connectors. In order to do that I use a fine detail brush and the most important tools there is. Time and patience. To mask the dark grey details, I use a nice thin masking tape that does pretty well for that sort of job. I then try to match the color visually as best as I could, but again, close enough works just fine for me. I glued the central rectangle pieces in place. Test the light one more time. And then it was time to permanently close the ball by fixing the connectors the same way. At this point, I started working on the base that I sketched and designed based on many others that I've seen online. A round base made of wood, an aluminum connector, a small metal pipe that allows the wire to go through, and find a way to include the battery pack somewhere in there. With an old saw and a forstner bit, I made some room underneath the base to recess the battery pack so it doesn't get in the way. Made the hole for the pipe connector. Quickly machined the connector on the lathe. Test fit it. Adjusted the diameter of the pipe to fit the sphere. I then covered the base with bondo to hide the little imperfection from the wood and to get a smooth finish once painted. I saw something similar online and I really liked the idea of having the base being a replica of the game table from the Millennium Falcon. 
So I made a quick template, cut it out on my vinyl cutter and painfully stuck it to the base. It was time for the weathering. To me, weathering is a key moment that can either give life to your object or mess it up real good if it's done too much. To weather a prop and try to make it believable, you have to tell the story. To think about things like the age of the prop, how it was used, was it damaged at some point? Is it brand new? Should it be dusty because it was sitting in the desert for a long time? Or should there be any scratch on the object, and if there is, where should they go? The more time you spend thinking about these layers, the better the props will look in the end. I always like weathered props better because for one, they look cooler and for two, the weathering process hides a lot of crimes meaning that it can cover a lot of mistakes and small imperfection from the build itself. And I personally find clean objects way harder to nail because there's no room for mistakes. They need to simply be perfect. The only thing left was the final assembly. I started with the pipe and made my way down to the base. Soldered the battery pack and the switch to the wire. Made sure the light works fine with the switch. And finally, give the base a nice foam padding. I have been waiting for a long time to add this prop to my collection. But when I see the result, I believe the wait was really worth it.